Hi there, welcome. My name is Wendy and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm excited you're here with me today, but I do have a little disclaimer. This video is not a crafting video. Every Thursday I post to my YouTube channel and blog specifically helping demonstrators. So if you're here today and you're hoping for a crafty video, I really recommend that you go to one of the other videos I have from this week or on my YouTube channel. I do have over 900 might be a thousand now, uh, crafty videos for you. So if you're interested in one of those, please check that out on my YouTube channel. If you're a demonstrator and you're here because you want to learn about budgeting or about some awesome tools for your business, then you've come to the right place. We're going to jump in and get started. So today's video is about three absolute must-haves in my business as an online demonstrator. Now, before we even go any further, I want to say that I did not start my business all online. I started my business in person and I built my online presence over time. Because we are in such a niche market, you are not going to just immediately have tons of growth on YouTube. That's very unusual. So you have to put in some time in growing your followers and you also have to supplement by having classes and workshops in person. That's really, really important. I did a lot of that in the beginning before I had a successful YouTube channel and blog. Now I can safe, safely say that I am 99% online. I still do have one small event in my house every month because I have some customers that I love dearly and they don't order online. So outside of that, everything else I do is online. But I feel like the pipe dream that a lot of people have is that they're gonna start an online business and within a few days or weeks or even just a few short months, they're going to have this huge outpouring of orders and um, followers and it just doesn't work that way, especially if you don't have enough of the tools in place to help you get there. So today's video I am hoping will help you get a few items in place that you're really gonna need to help catapult your business um, and help you um, online in the online industry. Now, I wanna give this disclaimer, and this is a little bit of tough love, but I think it's really necessary. If you currently struggle with navigating Facebook, or you currently struggle navigating your own email, or you currently struggle with navigating YouTube, then I wouldn't recommend an online business for you unless you plan on going and taking some classes on how to use technology. Technology is ever-changing and it's never gonna stay the same. That's what makes it technology. It keeps growing and changing and things that work today might not work in 10 years, probably won't work in 10 years. And the things that worked 10 years ago might not work today. So I just want you to understand and know that if you already struggle with technology as a whole, having an online business might not be for you because there's an enormous amount of stuff that goes into running a blog, running a YouTube channel, running social media. Really, it's very time consuming and it does take a lot of know-how and it requires you to do a lot of research if you don't know how to do certain things. So everything I've done has been either through the help of other people or me spending hours Googling and researching for myself. I highly recommend that if you struggle with technology, you look at having a business that is in-person, face-to-face based because you will have a ton of um, success and enjoyment out of that. Okay, so that's my disclaimer for today's video as far as the technology goes. So the three things that I feel like are absolute must-haves in your business for um, running an online business are email marketing, which we're going to dive in and look at a little bit today. Um, that's an absolute must have. Um, so email marketing, um, uh, PicMonkey, which is a tool that's easily usable online to create images and graphics and do different things for your blog or your Facebook or whatever. And then the other one is Tailwind. Tailwind is a super, super important um, tool in my business to use for helping me schedule Pinterest uh, interaction. 
most of my traffic from my to my blog comes from Pinterest. Um, I would say 43% on average. So I'm getting more traffic from Pinterest than I even do from YouTube. Generally, people who are watching videos like this sometimes will click to a blog, but usually they're getting the information they need right here on YouTube and they don't click to go to a blog. But I get a lot of traffic to my blog from Pinterest. So I'm going to show you those tools and a really quick, fast, short tutorial on how to use them. And there are so many other tools that I use, but those are the three that I feel like are my very top, super important. Um, I use them every single day, both of them. So let's go to my computer and check them out. And I'm gonna tell you how much they cost as well. Here we are at PicMonkey and I wanted to just do a really quick overview for you so you could see how it works. Um, it's PicMonkey.com and there are two options. You can use it completely free and that is, I'm going to give you a quick overview of that and then you can also pay for it. So if you click on pricing, you will see that you can get it for $7.99 a month. $12.99 a month or $33.99 a month for a team. Now, I will say I personally got in really early with PicMonkey and paid their yearly rate and I'm grandfathered into that rate. And so it's awesome. But honestly, this, this has been such a wonderful, awesome program to have and I would highly recommend it to anybody. Um, you're able to, um, you're able to do so much with this and the storage on, I mean, it's just awesome. So I highly do. Re I highly recommend it. Really. I do. Um, okay. So let's go back. Now, the caveat to this would be if you already have Photoshop editor or you have something else that you're using, great. The reason I like PicMonkey is because they store all of my designs and stuff on their cloud, not mine, which is a double-edged sword because that also does mean that if something ever happens to PicMonkey, then I'm... I lose some things. I do save everything to my computer that's finished, but stuff that's unfinished that I want to go back and edit is stored with PicMonkey. Personally, I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon, but if they did, I, I would lose that. So you can click edit a photo. It's going to ask me to sign up. So this isn't actually going to work because I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. So I'm logging in, but you could make an account right there. When you log in, this is what you see. So these are all, up here is all of my photos and stuff that I've edited. So you're seeing some projects that are coming up on my blog. And um, down here are templates and stuff that you can use. So one of the things that I need to make is a Facebook post. So we're going to click Facebook post. So here you can name it what you want to name it. And there's way more options than this, guys. I'm just taking you through a very simple um, tutorial, but there's PicMonkey has videos on how to use PicMonkey. Um, so like a Facebook post I need would be, um, let's see. Let me think about what I would need coming up. Um... Mm-hmm. We're gonna I guess I should have been prepared with something, right? So we're gonna go um we'll just do a business budget workbook post and create. So now I can this is the image size for any Facebook post, okay? This is like the ideal Facebook thing. And so I can add an image by clicking add image. I can grab it from my hub, which is their version of the cloud, 
which is all of my stuff here, or I can click my computer and pull it from my computer. So I really don't need a photo for this. I'm just gonna design graphics, but I just wanted to show you really quick where you could grab it from. You could also grab it from your cloud or Dropbox or wherever. So I'm actually going to make, um, okay, so on the edge here, let's, th let's go through these. You have the edits that you can make. You can crop, resize, rotate, background color. You can fix the exposure of a photo, the colors of a photo. You can do lots and lots of lots of edits here. Then you have effects. This is where you can just add like an effect to something. So if I had a photo here, you can click on it and it'll change the way it looks. You can touch up and do airbrushing and that kind of stuff, which I never use. You can add text, which I use all the time. And the best part is when you sign up with them, you can, um, you can upload your own fonts to this. So that's awesome. You can add basic shapes, which we are probably going to do. So you'll see that. You can create borders or shape cutouts. You can add texture and there's themes. So like if it's, um, you know, Christmas, you can click on this one and there's like, it'll give you ideas for text to use for Christmas. There's images that you can use for Christmas time. It's really cute. Okay, so we're going to first add a border. And I want to change the color of this, so I'm going to click here. And you can put any um, hex code in here that you want. And I'm going to do mine for my website color. And I actually think I'm going to change this to this one. I like this one better. Okay. And then you click, and then I want my inner border to be that and click apply. And then on the inside of this, I can add anything I want. So I'm going to add text and I'm going to say, click here. And I have no idea if I'll ever even use this graphic, but I'm going to make it. So, so that changes the color and then add text. I'm going to actually go up here and say for, whoops, I can type because you're watching me. I know you're like, what the heck is happening? So then I'm going to choose all of that and shrink it down. Okay, so this is not, I mean, like I would make this a different color. And, um, I use the colors that are my blog colors, okay? So if you are running a business and you have a blog or if you don't have a blog, something you need to think about is, um, so I actually probably, I probably wouldn't use this because this would not go on Facebook because they wouldn't be able to click the photo. But I just wanna show you how to make something. Um, so the deal with PicMonkey is you can create graphics. If I had a photo, I can watermark it. So let's just, let me see if I have a quick photo that needs to be watermarked. Oh, I clicked add image. So that's going to actually add an image to this. So if you want to create something, you have to click create new. Now, the cool thing is that 
the image that I've already made is saved in my hub on a And do I have anything that needs to be watermarked? Not right now. Um, so let's just... We'll just do a cute picture of my doggies. Oh, this is a great, actually, sample. This I was going to make this graphic. Cause I thought it was cute. So look at them. It was Monday morning. Ignore my dirty fireplace. So we're going to crop this photo just a little. Apply. And then I'm going to add my watermark. So I'm adding my own image and I'm going to click where it's at. And then I can drag it to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to put it right here over Buddy's little paw. Look how gross his eyeballs are. Ugh. Why do little dogs get that? Okay. And then I'm going to add some text. Hmm. I'm going to go with this one, which actually isn't. change the color and we're going to drag it out and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller I'm going to put it right here and how fun is that done. So I could crop this a little, um, but I think I'm going to leave it because I want, I want that. I want people to see that it's a living room, right? And that they're just like, ugh, we can't even. So export and then I'm going to save it and I make it smaller so it will fit my blog because I have a certain size I put on my blog so that all my photos are the same size. And then I got to go in and save it where my save stuff is. Save. Done. Now this is a cute graphic that I can use on my website or I could use it on Facebook, wherever I want to use it. But it's cute and it's fun and it has my doggies, which is the best part. Okay, so that's PicMonkey. All right. So let's go over to Aweber Marketing. We're going to go ahead and show you. There's MailChimp. That are um, popular. So there's constant contact, looks like this, a uh, MailChimp, and Aweber. And on each one of these, you can go look at their pricing. So um, this one is still free. Oh wow, up to 2,000 subscribers. So that's pretty good. And 12,000 emails per month. So if you're new and you're just starting out and you just need an email program, I would go with MailChimp. I, only reason I did not go with MailChimp is at the time that I got my email marketing, I did not know if MailChimp had the stuff that I needed to work well with my website and I knew Aweber did. So that's why. Otherwise, I would have gone with MailChimp to start out. Okay, so once you're logged into this, this is where I can send emails. And I can see when somebody clicks on it, who clicks on it, how they're opened, how many people open it. I can see how many people have complained about getting my email, which is always fun and disheartening. Um, and I can create emails here. So like I can copy this to drafts. And then I can go in and I can create my email. And then this email will go out to everybody that's subscribed to my list. Now, I 
have to tell you that this is such an important tool because if you don't have um, email marketing, if something happens to like Facebook or Instagram or any of these other tools that we use, then you're going to have no way to contact your people. You should regularly download your email list like probably every few months so that you have it and it's not just on this site. So that's another thing that you can do as a precaution to make sure that you don't lose your emails and contacts with people because I mean, essentially, even a Weber could go away. And if they did, then I would be sunk. So it's just important to to make sure you do have some backup plans and you save some things. So this is what email marketing is. When you hear people talk about email marketing, it is emails that they send out to their customers to, you know, give them information or to, um, to get them to order or give them free stuff or whatever it is. It that's what email marketing is. So you have to choose one of these and then the, there's a link that you provide to your customers and then your customers sign up at the link. And when they sign up at the link, um then you're a, they have to confirm their email that they want to get emails from you and then you're able to send them emails. So that is how it works. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you is Tailwind. So we're going to go to Tailwind, and this is what it looks like. And you can sign up with Pinterest or Instagram. And I'm going to click Dashboard because I already have it. And this is what it looks like when you get in there. So here's the thing that is... The, Tailwind is a little scary because it is a little bit complicated. It's not super, super user friendly and it can be a little overwhelming and I'm there's no way I could give you a full tutorial on it today, but I just wanted to show you a quick overview of what it is. So basically it uses, um, it, it publishes pins for you. So if we go to the publisher and I go to my scheduled pins, you're going to see that I have over on this side over here, I have 200 and something pins scheduled to release. And they're all different things. So like this is a Valentine's project that's gonna get posted today in my Valentine's projects and cards pin, um, folder. Um, this is my small business tips. This is my business budget workbook information, and it's going to get posted today at 11.47 a.m. in my small business tips folder. So I have these all scheduled out, ready to go, and it's so easy to do. You do it from your website or from your Facebook or whatever, and you publish it to here, and then it schedules it all for you. You can shuffle your queue so that it's all shuffled up. And um, I, I pay $14.99 a month right now because I didn't know for sure if it was something I was gonna keep using. I feel pretty confident it's something I'm gonna keep using, so I should probably switch to annual billing. It'll save me a little money. Um, but you can also have pins scheduled from Instagram. So these are all photos I've put on Instagram and I could pin them to Pinterest if I wanted to. Now, I honestly don't use this because most of the time I'm putting stuff on Instagram that I've already put on my blog. Excuse me, put on my blog and put on Pinterest. So I don't use this. This isn't something I use. Although, like, I could pin this, so let's do it. So we'll schedule this one. This is going to pull from my in Instagram. And I'm going to put it under... And now these are all my boards from Pinterest. And I'm going to put it under man cards and gifts. And I'm going to schedule. Done. So that one's scheduled. And let's see, is there anything else really cute and good on here that I could... 
schedule that I haven't already? I don't think so. That's the thing. Like most, this one might not be. So we could schedule this. Let's do that. So we'll schedule this one. Mm. We'll just put it, we'll put it on my team Pinterest page. This is cute too. Let's schedule this guy also. We'll go Valentine's with him. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty much how this works. It's, it is more complicated, but again, we only have so much time. So here's the cool thing. You go to click this where it says video tailwind guides and but a damn there it is. You've got Tailwind Video Guides galore. So you can learn how to use Tailwind completely and totally. It's already there for you. Um, so I recommend this highly, highly, highly if you don't already have some sort of program that you are using to schedule stuff. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope that you have enjoyed your time with me. And next week we are going to be talking about um, some some fun stuff with Stampin' Up. So tune in again and leave me comments and let me know if you enjoyed this video. I would really like to know that. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.